going on there guys good evening it is the earth master here on the live stream on this beautiful once again it is thursday evening october 7th 2021 about 6 12 p.m california time the latest quake on the globe just coming in to the earthquake 3d uh, globe here is a 2.8 at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone pretty active movement <clears throat> once again in this area today uh, as well as worldwide, we've seen quite the increase in earthquake activity uh, with a 5.9 near Japan. Also quite a few fives stretching over towards the uh, Philippines area, <clears throat> excuse me, and areas to the west as well. Uh, the largest quake so far today is 6.1 down in the uh, Macquarie Islands area south of New Zealand. Of course, last night we had this 4.6 pretty deep. Um, into the um, I believe pretty close to the uh, well let's see here the Hikurangi subduction zone is in this area right here on the globe so it's kind of interesting that we've seen a little bit larger quake uh, roughly around the same plate boundary um, here down to the south where that 6.1 struck <clears throat> see if I can keep my voice for this uh, for this update um, I got, got a change in the weather and it seems like things uh, um, kind of take its toll on the voice when I when that happens all right USGS map there showing the earthquake activity really ramping up along the west coast right now um, I believe we're seeing a little we see a little adjustment this morning <clears throat> and throughout the day into the Japan area and area south including that 6.1 down there Macquarie Island but now we're getting the circulation I, I guess I could say cir circulation or the back feed back building a pressure once again along the North American Pacific plate there is that 2.8 striking into um, <clears throat> just off the coast of Eureka, California. Pretty deep earthquake here just off the coast of or just off the uh, to the west of the Cascadia subduction zone, the locked area, <clears throat> which sits right about in this region. Uh, there's that 2.8, 23 kilometers below surface. We had seen some movement a little bit further to the northwest with a 2.7. <clears throat> that was late last night, I believe, early this morning. Uh, up towards the Gorda Ridges, uh, there's a pair of earthquakes that is relatively deep southeast of Fortuna, southeast of Eureka. These earthquakes here down there at about 20 kilometers, way down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Uh, just because they're on the surface here, uh, those are definitely subduction zone quakes with that level of uh, the depth there for the earthquakes. Also outside of Redding, a 22 kilometer deep uh, 2.6 that struck uh, late last night. Also some further movement down here around Point Arena with a 1.7, very shallow earthquake just off the San Andreas Fault, uh, the main plate boundary here. But the USGS does have a, uh, a little San Andreas Fault zone, the north coast section, where that 1.7 struck um, earlier today. So quite the increase in earthquake activity along the west coast, uh, including if you look over here around Mono Lake, I'm starting to think this might be volcanic in nature. Uh, Mono Lake, Long Valley Super Volcano, a lot of volcanic domes and uh, buttes and whatnot throughout this area here. We've been watching a swarm of movement into the Mono Lake area just now 3.7 within the last hour uh, right around the Mono Lake area. It looks like uh, some further after. I, don't, I can't even say this is aftershock activity because it's been ongoing for a little while here. If we pull back the all magnitudes here over the last 30 days, you can see a stretch of earthquake activity or volcanic activity uh, stretching towards the Mono Lake area. The depth of these earthquakes are kind of puzzling when it comes to uh, uh, trying to figure out if these are uh, purely uh, plate dynamics here or, or indeed volcanic because some of these earthquakes uh, stretching down to about 22 kilometers uh, below the surface. So kind of keeping an eye on that area. Also down south here around the Long Valley Super Volcano Caldera. Uh, we've seen a swarm of movement. All this area um, is a hot spot of volcanic activity. So we've got to keep an eye for sure on what's going on out here. USGS. Uh, let's see what these guys have for the uh, fault systems out here. There's not a whole lot. There is some information in regards to the Mono Lake area, which uh, uh, contains a lot of, well, obviously volcanic craters and the Gives a, a little bit of uh, information on the lava flows and whatnot throughout the area. Um, Mammoth Mountain. Uh, let's see. A whole bunch of stuff here, folks. I kind of want to go. I mean, I, I was down there for Long Valley Super Volcano, but uh, I didn't really get a chance to check out the Mono Lake area. 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of background information on this area and how this how this uh, how it was formed. Uh, the Long Valley to Mono Lake region is one of three areas in California that are in the United States Geological Survey's Volcanic Hazards Program. These areas are in the program because they have been active in the last 2,000 years and have the ability to produce explosive eruptions. About 20 eruptions have occurred on the Mono Inyo, uh, Inyo crater chain at intervals of 250 to 700 years. Uh, during the past 5,000 years, seismic soundings and lava composition indicate that these eruptions most likely originated from discrete and small magma bodies. The rate of eruption over the last 1,000 years has increased, with at least 12 eruptions occurring. All eruptions in the last 5,000 years um, have expelled less than uh, 0.24 cubic miles of magma. Future eruptions in the area will likely be similar in size to the small to moderate events of the past 5,000 years. There is a 1 in 200 chance per year of an eruption occurring along the chain. I think we may be seeing something like that. Uh, an eruption in the foreseeable future is probably more likely uh, than an unrelated eruption inside Long Valley Caldera. That Yeah, we don't want the Long Valley Caldera because that's a pretty pretty extensive uh, uh, eruption if that thing does decide to blow. Uh, yeah, so a whole lot going on here, folks. Just today, you know, like I said, we've seen this large increase. Can't really say large, but a 3.7 kind of kicking off potentially a swarm in this area. The Long Valley Super Volcano. Hold on a second here. Okay, Long Valley Valley Super Volcano. Uh, just showing a couple small microquakes around the uh, the uh, Caldera area. But overall, uh, looking at the big picture, seismic activity really ramping up here within the last couple hours. We had seen a little die down in activity along the West Coast, but uh, it looks like it's really starting to kick up now with earthquake activity from the Cascadia uh, inland into the uh, North American plate. Ridgecrest area seen some movement as well within the last hour. Southern California, it seems like it almost seems like the Garlock Fault structure southward is just at a, a very uh, kind of like a pause at the moment very very minimal earthquake activity and it's been very minimal uh, for a few days now northward north of this this uh, garlock fault structure is where we're seeing a lot of the activity uh, really kicking up here's some movement uh, south of concord uh, right outside of walnut creek danville area 2.1 uh, near alamo 15 kilometers just, just seen a whole bunch of deep movement folks all over the place along the west coast uh, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map along the cascadia subduction zone you can see ongoing trimmer along the cascadia uh, in the southern end and also in the northern end uh, vancouver island area as well 464 earth or uh, epicenters of trimmer today this is kind of dwindling down a little bit but i don't think it's over i think if anything uh, this is going to pick up uh, pretty significantly today or as of within the last hour. This has been updated. Normally comes out about six o'clock, just about 20 minutes ago. Uh, we won't really know too much more um, if the trimmer is really ramped up or not until we get the report tomorrow. But uh, I have a feeling this number is probably gonna be uh, well above the 464 mark uh, from, uh, from today's activity. Just looking at all this uh, earthquake movement along the Cascadia and the area south into the Sierra Nevada and Mono Lake region. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I think it's going to be up there. Uh, let's see, what do we got in the Cascades around Mountain Hood? Little microquake, negative 0 0.3, okay. And also up here, well, north of uh, Mount Vernon area, a little swarm of activity once again. Kind of deeper movement around the Hamilton, Washington area, but just a couple small microquakes uh, within that region. The Aleutian Trench, pretty quiet. There's the activity uh, around the Tokyo area at a, a 5.9. It was almost a six pointer there. I think I seen a couple reports that it was a, originally a 6.2 downgraded um, to a 5.9, relatively deep folks, 62 kilometers below the surface. Uh, also just south here, uh, looks like they had a little uh, 4.1, but this one much, much deeper folks. It followed, looks like it followed the 5.9 a couple 
a couple hours afterwards, but that's, uh, man, that's a really, really deep earthquake. There's a regional uh, Philippines quake 5.2. This one deep as well, 182 kilometers. We're just seeing a cluster of deep earthquake activity along the North American plate and the Pacific plate. Uh, what do we got? 5.5, some deep movement as well. Look at that, 110 kilometers, folks, in this area of the world. Indonesia, 186 kilometers for that 4.9. It's almost like that's all we're seeing today. So, um, you know, it's it's something to watch pretty closely here. We could see a, a definite uptick in large earthquakes with all this deep movement. There's these 6.1 down south of New Zealand. This is an area to watch as well. Um, looks like that deep earthquake uh, in the uh, New Zealand area has dropped off the map, but uh, still watching that region pretty closely. Down here in the South Atlantic Ocean, around the South Sandwich Islands area, 5.5, the only quake today in that area. Also, Ecuador region getting in on some movement. It uh, looks like a 4.3, pretty deep earthquake there as well. Into the Peru-Chile Trench. The southward looks pretty quiet, though. We're not seeing too much um, movement at the moment in that area. Uh, off the coast of El Salvador, a couple fours kicking off. Uh, one right smack dab on the Middle American Trench that 4.4 uh, Puerto Rico area looking pretty quiet for now st. John's over here we're seeing a 4.4 uh, kicking up in that area of the world Pecos Texas and a line of activity stretching up through parts of uh, Texas could see uh, quite a few twos and whatnot kicking up here looks like a 2.9 the largest in this little cluster of quakes New Madrid area looking pretty quiet. Uh, we got a little speck up here. 1.6 in the Tennessee area. The East Coast looking uh, pretty quiet there, folks. Let's see what else we got here in the Yellowstone region. Uh, yeah, looks like it's calming down a little bit. There's the earthquakes from, uh, looks like those are the uh, um, 6 point, or the 5.9 near Japan and then the 6.1 uh, 6 down in the uh, Macquarie, Macquarie Islands area showing up on the on those seismographs far as the Yellowstone activity goes independent of that movement uh, looks pretty quiet I don't see any major swarming uh, to report at all looks like prior to the uh, prior to those two earthquakes there was some it's kind of weird how we get uh, some movement kicking off and then all of a sudden just dies down. But it looks as though uh, it may be picking back up just a little bit here in the Yellowstone area. Uh, what do we got here in the sun, folks? Check this out real quick. Looks pretty quiet. Far as any type of geomagnetic forecast goes, looks all clear in the green. Only a 20% chance of a sea flare. And looking at this uh, this map right here of the sun, or at least this image, shows only one sunspot on the Earth's side. That's 2882, kind of just out there all by itself. We got some more spots coming up here around the bend, it looks like. We'll have to keep an eye on that. A little small coronal hole facing Earth. But overall, general solar activity on the quiet side over the next couple days. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. We will chat to you a little bit later. Just going to monitor the uh, activity around the globe. And uh, just be prepared, folks. A whole lot of movement going on. Have a good night.